All right, well, you're probably watching this video because you have a homework question or a test tomorrow on the method of sections, and you have to know how to apply the method of sections to solve for forces and members. So what I want to do is I just want to take a few minutes here to try and explain that for a case here where we have a truss with a parallel top and bottom cord. So this is, you know, one type of truss that you might have, and there's a couple things that are unique about this, but what I want to do is I just want to run through this approach where we identify members, we solve for the support reactions for if needed. So in this case, I actually give you the support reactions so you don't need to solve for them. But if you have questions about that, you know, there's some other videos on solving for support reactions you can go check out. All right, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the truss through the members that we have to solve for. So we can expose those forces that, that are inside those members and then what we do is we apply the equations of equilibrium to solve for the member forces. So let's get started with that. So what I did here is I just copied this this information or the you know the diagram from up above and brought it down. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to you know I, we have identified these three members as members we need to solve for. So the first thing that I do is I just kind of get rid of them. All right, and when I get rid of them, I need to replace that with inside you know internal forces here that show up once we you know cut those members out okay so what i'm doing is i'm just replacing that you know with member cd uh member force you know dg and member force uh, fg and you'll notice that i always place these forces in the same orientation the same direction as the as the uh, cut truss members because the forces in a truss are going to line up with the member geometry that's a super important uh, assumption to know for trusses and it'll help you as you go to solve them so once we have this right what we can do is we can kind of come back and say well which side do we want to solve for you can solve for either side and it will be perfectly valid and you know i threw this out to my students the other day and they said we like the right side i said why they said it's got less stuff it's easier to draw so uh, I'm, I'm cool with that let's go with that so let's take that i'm just gonna you know copy this down all right so here's our diagram right what I, next thing i like to do is i like to look and see do we have any forces at an angle because if we have forces at an angle i like to show in uh, you know the the component forces in here as well so i'm going to draw my vertical and horizontal components i like to show those and, and you know maybe a different color or dashed in so that it's really obvious that you're either using the components or uh, the resultant but not both okay so now once we have the components in we can come and we can apply equations of equilibrium all right so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to look and see you know what equations of equilibrium we want to use and typically we look for I mean, let's just be honest. We look for the easiest one first, right? So in this case, when you have a parallel top and bottom cord in your truss, what ends up happening is you end up with only one vertical force. If you see it, there's only one unknown vertical force. CD is horizontal, FG is horizontal. There's only one unknown vertical force. So if that's the case, some of the forces in the Y direction makes a lot of sense because all we have is the one unknown vertical force, which is minus dGy. We have plus, you know, our reaction at E, which is 1.875 kips. All that has to equal zero. So right off the bat, we can get dGy equal to 1.875 kips. And we can box it in and, you know, be happy that we solved it. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is we want to look and say, well, how do we relate that force to something else. And again, if you remember what I said earlier, I said what we know is DG acts in the same direction, in the same orientation as uh, the the uh, the geometry. So if we know we have, you know, we can put our components in here. See, well, this is DGY. This is DGX. This has to act in the same direction as the member geometry. So if we draw the member geometry in here, right, what do we have? Well, we know the height of this thing is going to be three feet. We know the width of it, of DG, is going to be four feet. So I can put those in, right, and this becomes our beloved, you know, three, four, five triangle. So on one hand, you have the force geometry, and on the other side, we have the member geometry. So what we know is there's going to be ratios between these two, right? So it, these are similar triangles, and what we can do is we can relate one to the other. You know, we can also look at this in terms of like, you know, tangent. Well, tangent of this angle is going to equal, you know, on the one side it's going to equal, well, dGy opposite over adjacent, right, over dGx. On the other side it's going to equal 3 over 4. And we know that these have to be equal because of this relationship, the force lining up 
with the member. So at the end of the day, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here, we're gonna say let's solve for dgx, dgx equals four thirds, dgy, and we're gonna get dgx equal to uh, 2.5 kips. So that's good, right? Similarly, what we can do here is we can say, we know that um, dgy over dg, you know, maybe using the cosine here, has to equal three over five, which, you know, if we look at this again, we're gonna say, well, dg, dg has to equal five thirds of dgy, right? All we're doing is multiplying both sides by five thirds, multiplying both sides by dg, just doing a, a cross multiplication here, and we get dg is going to equal uh, 3.125 kips, okay? So we can, you know, box that in as well. One of the things that I haven't made mention of yet, but when we solved this value originally, we get a positive value. I didn't write the positive sign in, but this is a positive value. What that means is our arrow is shown in the correct direction. So if our arrow is shown in the correct di direction, you'll notice every time, every force that I drew here, whether it was on the, you know, this side or this side, it was always pulling away from the joint. So it's not saying one's negative, you know, one's positive and one's negative. What this is saying is they're both gonna be pulling away from the joint. If we, if we know if something's pulling away from the joint, we're gonna assume that's tension. So pulling away is tension. So because we get a positive sign, what that means is when we originally drew our arrow as pulling away, that was correct. So we can label this tension, you know, this tension and this tension. So they're all gonna be in tension and, and that's good, all right? And typically, if you have one component in tension, the other component and the main, you know, force vector all need to be in tension. They're all gonna be the same direction in that sense, okay? So once we have that, that kind of opens up the problem a little bit. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna just, you know, slide up here, but um, the next thing that, you know, we can do is sometimes, you know, well, some of the forces in the Y, why don't we go to some of the forces in the X? And the reason we're not gonna go with some of the forces in the X next is because we still have you know, FG is unknown and CD is unknown. So if we sum forces in the X direction, we still have two unknowns. So what does that lead? It leaves some of the moments. And when you're using the method of sections, the thing that I say to look for is where do the unknown forces intersect? Or where do the lines of action of the unknown forces intersect? So what I like to do is I like to take this, you know, force and just extend it out, right? So if I have, you know, a force going this way, I know that FG is going to act along this line when I sum moments. If I'm looking at DG, I might, you know, take this line out and keep extending it down to here, you know, and you'll notice that it intersects there. Okay, or if I'm taking DG, I can go the other direction as well. Okay, similarly, I can take CD, and I can take CD and extend that one out. And you'll notice that this line of action of DG and this line of action of CD all intersect right at point D. That's a great place to sum moments, because when we sum moments about point D, CD and DG both pass right through point D and don't cause a moment about point D. What that means is it leaves force FG as something we can solve for. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we're gonna sum our moments about point D. That has to equal zero, because any, you know, sum moments at any point has to equal zero. And what's left over? Well, we know we have our 1.875, so 1.875 kips times the moment arm in this case, and I didn't bring it back down, but the moment arm for 1.875 is gonna be uh, four feet here. Okay, so that's the distance between the line of action of that force and the point. Okay, that's the shortest distance between the line of action and the force. Okay, so that's gonna be four feet. It's a positive because it's it's tending to cause counterclockwise rotation about point D. And then if we look at FG, this is you know tending to cause counter, or, um, I'm sorry, clockwise rotation, so that's gonna be negative minus FG. And if we look at the moment arm for FG, uh, we can remember that this you know dimension here is three feet. So that's gonna be our moment arm uh, for FG. Okay, so we put that in, that equals zero. And you know you can add FG times three to the other side, divide by three, and what we're gonna get is FG is equal to uh, 2.5 kips. So that's really good, and we can box it in. Again, we get a positive sign, that, so that means our assumption was correct. 
Okay, now let's go to our last equation of equilibrium. Our last equation of equilibrium, some of the forces in the x direction equals zero. Okay, we're gonna say to the right is positive, and anything to the left is negative. So we'll start, you know, top down and say minus CD. Okay, uh, minus DGX plus two kips. So we're just working on all these forces, CD, DG, two kips, uh, and, you know, minus FG. Those are all our forces in the x direction. This has to equal zero. So now we're just gonna start substituting in. I'll, first I'll move the CD over to the other side because we don't know what that is yet, but I'll say CD is gonna equal minus DGX plus two kips minus FG. Okay, so I just rearranged the equation a little bit, but now I can start substituting in. So if we remember DGX was you know 2.5, so we have minus 2.5 kips plus two kips, you know, um, minus, what do we have here? FG is 2.5 kips. Okay, so when we do this out, what we get is CD equals to what, minus, if I combine the negative terms, I get minus five plus two, so this is gonna be minus three kips. So that's our answer. And you might say, I don't like negative signs. Stop being such a downer. But the, the reality of it is, the negative sign tells us something. It says when we assumed that this arrow was pulling away in tension, that, that that direction was wrong. What this negative sign means is that CD is in compression. It means the arrow was drawn the wrong way when we assume tension. We got a negative value, so that means it's actually in compression. All right, so if you wanted to check this, another way you could look at it was, if, you know, some moments about uh, this point G here, right? If we sum moments about G, we can also solve for CD. So that's something, you know, maybe you can do to check it. But um, this is kind of a cool, a cool method because uh, we can solve for just the forces we want, right? So in this case, what we did was first we solved for some forces in Y to get one of the components here. And then really this is where the, the strength of the method of sections is. We sum moments about a point to solve for a force, all right? So um, once we get did that, you know, we could use our, our last equation of equilibrium to solve the whole problem. So I hope that's helpful. If you have questions, you know, feel free to leave a comment. But until next time, keep working hard, moving onward and upward.